Hello everyone, this is JG1 Barton. Welcome back to another video. Yes, this is Battle of Stalingrad, and yes, this is recent footage. Yes, I did put out a video stating that I wasn't going to play this game anymore. I'd uninstalled it, and I was done with it. And I meant it when I said it. Now, some of the opinions that I put forward in that video received a little bit of backlash. Now, anytime you voice an opinion on the internet, someone is going to come up with a counter opinion, and that's fine. Everyone has a right to an opinion, and they have a right to give that opinion. One of the criticisms that I received was that my opinions were simply opinions, and they were not scientific. And that criticism was correct. I didn't give any scientific evidence of any kind. I simply stated what my experiences were in the game, and why I didn't like it, and why I wasn't going to fly it anymore. However, I did see an opportunity to go back and do the direct comparisons that I needed to to really show people what I was talking about. And the comparison that I ended up performing was between the E7 in Battle of Stalingrad and the BF-109 E4 in Cliffs of Dover. I also performed a comparison of the Focke-Wulf 190A3 and the Focke-Wulf 190D9 of DCS. Now, the Focke Wolf D9 and the A3 are certainly not an apples to apples comparison, but they are more or less a kind of apple, considering that the D9's only modification was a different engine and a slightly elongated tail. The wings were precisely the same. This being the case, their stall characteristics should be fairly similar, although not identical because they are somewhat different aircraft. I really wanted to do this comparison with 1946 as well thinking that I still had a backup copy on an external hard drive, but some time ago I managed to delete that because I didn't think I'd ever need it again. So in order to reinstall IL-2-1946, I'd have to dig up my old hard copies, and I just wasn't going to go that far. And doing this comparison meant that I had to re-download IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad and set keys and bindings and axes and stuff like that. And while I was doing that, I really decided to sit down and hammer out my sensitivities. Now, I think it's absolutely bullshit that you have to set your sensitivities and sit here and experiment with them just to get the aircraft to be even flyable in this game. However, once you do, in an even greater extent than I did when I made the video about sensitivities, ironically, uh, the aircraft become quite a bit more flyable than even I'd expected. The stall characteristics are still crap, though. And that's what I wanted to show you guys in this video. And to compare the aircraft's performance and their stall characteristics, I performed four different maneuvers, all of which occurred at 1,000 meters altitude and roughly 400 kilometers an hour. Two of those maneuvers were simply flat turns, pulling the stick as far back as I could trying to get the aircraft to stall both to the left and right side. Now the second maneuver that I performed was a full back stick and full right or left rudder. We'll begin our examination starting with the BF 109E4 from Cliffs of Dover and the 109E7 from Battle of Stalingrad. We'll start off with the BF 109E4 of Cliffs of Dover going full back stick and full right rudder. In cockpit, everything looks pretty sensible. It's pretty easy to tell that the right wing has stalled and it's begun to rotate around on top of it. From an external view, everything looks exactly as you might remember it from IL-2 1946. Quite remarkable, though, is the difference in how the E-4 from Cliffs of Dover and the E-7 from Battle of Stalingrad recover from the spin. The 109E-4 becomes quite stable very quickly. Performing the maneuver in the opposite direction yields identical results. Again, the aircraft recovers nicely and becomes almost instantaneously stable. What is interesting to note is that in both the left and right hand turns at 400 kilometers an hour and 1,000 meters did not get this aircraft to stall whatsoever. It lost speed and buffeted like crazy, but there was no wing dip, no spin, and no noticeable loss of control. Now, let's examine the E7 from Battle of Stalingrad and see what the differences are. The first maneuver we'll pull in the E7 is full back stick and full right rudder. The difference is absolutely astounding. I literally don't know what in the world is going on with this aircraft. And that exact same stall when viewed from the external view makes even less sense. And it's the same even in the opposite direction. 
The 109 decides it wants to cartwheel before turning around and flying backwards and then going into a flat spin. But now let's go ahead and look at the flat right hand turn. Remember the E4 in Cliffs of Dover didn't stall at all, but that is not the case with the E7 in Battle of Stalingrad. It did a backflip. I've never seen this in any aircraft, in any simulator, ever. Again, this makes even less sense from external views. A stall going left is much the same. It's readily apparent that the left wing stalls, but what happens after that is anyone's guess. Again, from the external view, this makes very little sense. Now let's go and compare the 190s, starting with the D9 of DCS. Starting off with full backstick, full right rudder. During this maneuver, the right wing stalls and snaps it into a cartwheel where both wings appear to be stalled at the exact same rate and the tail is pushed around by the rudder. Centering the stick and adding opposite rudder is more than enough to get it out of the stall condition. The same maneuver in the opposite direction yields similar results. Interestingly, the aircraft's nose and tail appear to swap places about halfway through the stall immediately before I regain control of the aircraft. Now let's go into the flat right hand turn. Unfortunately I didn't get this completely as flat as I'd like considering that I was flying in external views, but the right wing stalls momentarily and then the left wing stalls momentarily, but the aircraft does not go into a spin. And the aircraft does pretty much the exact same thing in a left hand turn. So let's move on to the Falk Wolf 190A3 of Battle of Stalingrad and compare. And per usual we'll start off with full back stick, full right rudder. And here the Falkwolf actually seems to perform quite well. It cartwheels similarly to the 190D9 of DCS and it recovers quite easily and it regains its stability quite well. Now let's see how it performs in the opposite direction. The aircraft snaps wildly to the left and then goes into a full-on cartwheel which is a little odd considering the direction of flight at the moment. However, it does recover quickly and simply, and eventually regains its stability and pulls out quite well. On to the level turns. In a flat right hand turn, the stall initiates on the top wing, pulling the aircraft to the left into a rotation that mimics the cartwheeling that we got out of the previous maneuvers. In a left hand turn, the same wing stalls being the lower wing, and ends up with the exact same effect, more or less. Now, I'm certainly not a PhD physics professor, nor do I have a degree in aerodynamics, nor do I have any actual test data to go side by side with it, even though we do have an original Focke-Wulf 190A5, I highly doubt you'll be able to get the flying heritage to agree to stall characteristics tests. Although the aircraft seem to fly a little bit better than I had originally given them credit for, once you get the sensitivity set up correctly, I still think that major corrections are necessary. I think the main discrepancy with the Battle of Stalingrad flight models is that the tailplane stabilizers do not have the stabilizing effect that they should have, and the control surfaces have far too much authority. I think this is doubly apparent, not only in the stall characteristics, but also in the fact that with stock sensitivities, these aircraft are insanely sensitive. In the BF-109 stall characteristics especially, it is readily apparent that the elevators have far more authority than they should in a high angle of attack stall. Where the angle of attack of the horizontal stabilizers should block the elevators 
authority and settle into a kind of equilibrium, it seems that the elevators still, through some magical force, are able to push the tail of the aircraft down excessively. Reducing the authority of the elevator and rudders would not have any noticeable impact on the flight characteristics in controlled flight. The elevators would seem just a little bit smoother and they would require a little bit less uh, smoothing out through your sensitivities in order to feel right. It would also cure the insane post-stall characteristics of these aircraft. Admittedly, I haven't done this with every plane, so I don't know exactly how every aircraft feels or how extensive this problem is. I have heard that the BF-110 seems pretty well mannered compared to how people would expect that it feels from those people that I know that fly that plane on a regular basis. If you think I'm wrong or you have anything to add to this, please comment below. If you liked the video, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.